I cheated on a wonderful man and guilt is eating me alive. How do I tell my husband about my two-night stand? When I was abroad on a business trip in November, I, 31 female, had a two-night stand. I met my hubby, 30 years old, five years ago, and we've been married for three years. My spouse is Indian, and I'm white. We met at university while we were both students. He had been quite occupied with a project he had been working on for the previous several months last year. As a result, I wasn't receiving the attention I was accustomed to from him, and his ex was uncommon. I was on a business trip for a week in November, and one of my colleagues from a branch in another city was continually hitting on me. So on the final two nights of the vacation I succumbed. To be clear, I am not attracted to this man in the least. It was only that he caught me at a vulnerable point. On the way back, I understood what I had done and chose not to tell anybody. I reasoned that there was no harm, no. Foul. I was okay with it. But in December, I had a little mishap. I went down the stairs that resulted in a slight fracture in my arm. After that, he took excellent care of me. Despite the fact that I healed rapidly, I was not permitted to undertake any home tasks until the end of January. He was in charge of all home tasks. During that time, feelings of remorse began to sneak in, with ideas such as if he understood what I had done, he wouldn't be here. Nonetheless, I resolved to deal with my guilt. Then, towards the end of January, he was promoted for his contributions to the project. We held a modest celebration with some of our friends at a restaurant. Our pals were curious as to how we met. He was giving me the whole narrative about how I asked him to buy him a drink on a dare, how he doesn't drink and was just hanging out with his pals at the pub. So, when he told the narrative, I observed the sparkle in his eyes, the way he looked at me, and the pride he feels in me. I felt like I was about to burst from the weight of my guilt. He's now talking about having children and forming a family. As much as I'd want to, I've opted not to tell him anything that occurred before it having children. I am terrified that he will abandon me. The likelihood of a divorce is high. He is a guy of great morals and principles. I'll inform him after this Valentine's Day weekend. He once informed me that he wanted to try new things. So, this Valentine's Day weekend, I'm going to fulfill his wish. I'm going all out Christian Grey on him. I've planned every disgusting thing I'm going to say to him. The next three days will be all about him. I hope that once I tell him the truth, he remembers this and believes me when I tell him how much I love him and that he is the most important person in the world to me. I hope he gives me another opportunity so that I can show him how much he means to me every day for the rest of our lives. I simply don't know what to say to him to boost his chances. Of remaining, please assist me. Update. I'm still unable to inform him. He's now dozing off in our bed. Our Valentine's Day weekend was fantastic. As I said in my last essay, I intended to surprise him with a fresh experience. He appreciated the surprise and had a good time of it. The only thing is that I expected the sex to be hard, but it inadvertently changed into sensuous sex. I went from saying, you've been a very nasty kid, to saying, I love you so much. I was on top of the world at the time, and he was staring at me lovingly, and when our eyes connected, it was as if we exchanged a thousand words without saying a single word. He was shackled to our bed, and I had my hands all over him. I think I love him more right now than I did on our wedding day. When I finally chose to tell him, my fear of losing him outweighed the urge to be truthful. It's as though my brain and mind are at odds with one other. Since last month, I've been visiting a therapist. I haven't informed him I. Seeing a therapist because I don't want him to know about my mental difficulties. He believes I'm upset or depressed about something right now, and he's doing all he can to make me laugh. He played a joke on me last month, and he made me laugh only a few days ago by tickling me till my stomach ate. My therapist advised that we invite him to a session so that I can be honest with him in front of a professional, but I'm still not convinced. I examined why I had been disloyal to him. It was as though I was mentally unconscious at the moment. Because he was so busy, he couldn't give me the attention I believed I deserved. I had heard of couples losing their desire for one other and assumed that this was the beginning of my period. As a result, I acted out by cheating on him. It didn't matter that I didn't find him handsome. What mattered was that he was giving me the attention I desired. Some people told me that telling him the truth would only harm him, but he is unique in that regard. He is not easily injured, and he is always honest, no matter how severe. He is a self-assured individual who is aware of his behaviors and feelings. When we first began dating, he was open about the fact that he is not only a virgin, but has never kissed a female. His first and only girlfriend is me. This was novel to me. As a result, honesty is the bedrock of our partnership. 
I don't want to be honest only to relieve my guilt. I want to keep the core of our relationship intact. Even if he is able to handle his pain, he will undoubtedly be dissatisfied and ultimately divorce me. I don't want him to leave me, but I also want to keep the basis of our relationship intact. This is what I'm concerned about. I don't want to lose the finest thing that has ever happened to me because of a bad mistake I made. Right now, I'm divided between these two options. The only thing I know for certain is that I adore him. Story 2 One year since the divorce was final. In one year, after 28 years of marriage, I, 51-year-old female, have been legally separated, confirmed by a court, from my husband. He, 51-year-old man, has relocated and taken up new employment in order to be closer to his AP, stripper younger than our 29-year-old daughter. Fortunately, I'm not aware of whether they live together or separately. I'm now in the state of North Carolina. It's as if the money just arrives in my account on a monthly basis. I rolled down the window of the car just enough to check on the last touch before driving away. I rolled the car back up and drove away, without saying anything to anybody. Even though I don't want it to, it is a painful day. It doesn't hurt nearly as much as I had anticipated. I'd want to commemorate the fact that I've been able to create a nice life for myself. Although not perfect, it is sufficient. I feel something fantastic is on the horizon, but it will take some time to manifest itself fully. If you're just getting started, I hope this instills some confidence in you. It is improving, but at a snail's rate at this point. On D-Day, I realized it was over nearly as soon as it began. I believed that avoiding engagement as much as possible was the best course of action for me. We used to be known as the gold standard duo, but that was before we stopped being such. I've been surprised by how much I'm not alone in my circumstances. Some of my friends have made the decision to stay neutral. I just came to the conclusion that they can have him. Despite the fact that there is no trouble or bad feelings, it increases the size of my no-contact zone. Of course, our daughter is the one and only exception. We don't discuss her father, on the other hand. I am in a wonderful relationship, and I am continually astounded by the love and compassion that I get from others. I'd become used to the brusqueness of silence and self-centeredness. Of course, I didn't tell anybody about my encounters with the police. I didn't want to say anything negative about my wife. I didn't tell anybody that he was an alcoholic who drank himself to death seven nights a week while on the run. That is something I will never ever allow in the future. I have no clue how long this current link will continue to function, but I am ready to wait and see what transpires in the meantime. So far, everything seems to be going fairly well for us. The last several months have seen me living in my own apartment. Until now, this has been the first time I've taken part in anything like this. It's much better than I had hoped. I'm a lot more powerful than I realized. It's possible that I'll be really hurt by the idea that I invested so much effort and emotion into a connection that is no longer there. At the same time, I may be overjoyed about a sushi date to commemorate the completion of a tough task. I'm still working on ridding myself of non-reciprocal relationships in my life. Not with a ruckus, but rather with a polite push away from the table. I hope the sadness continues to fade and the joy continues to rise. In the meanwhile, I sign up for an online dance lesson as well as a painting class. All of these are factors that my ex would have discreetly examined and overlooked since I am a complete and total novice. I'm looking for the stability of a long-term relationship in which I can anticipate my partner's feelings and behavior. In part, this is because I am fearful of being humiliated or mocked in subtle and violent ways by my ex. The only way ahead is to keep moving forward. No matter where you are in the process, I hope you are able to find some enjoyment today.